everybody, Chris here with Clean Sports Woodworking Shop and welcome to the Tech Lab. Today, join me as I'm gonna take this old recipe that's handwritten and carve it out on this ugly old cutting board. We'll be using a lot of cool tools to get from here to here, so join us on the journey as we get started. Enough talk, let's get going. So the original copy had some funky lines through it and kind of oddball, but we ended up having to clean that up using some graphite paper and then we tried to copy that in. It was still a little small. So we enlarged that version and that's what we ended up going with was an enlarged copy that we got on the copy machine. And we used this graphite paper to be able to get nice clean lines uh, so that there would be no fading. Uh, that does help with the digitization uh, when you're using the shape or trace to have a nice clean version. And of course now it's time to sand. We did work through the grit range of course, making sure to get all the edges as well as the flat part. They wanted us to look a little rustic but not too rustic. So we used our uh, five by eight sampler pack on our Bosch sander to get this done. And they wanted a tone brown, so we ended up using the perfect brown out of the Mohawk toners to achieve the color that they desired. Normally used for repair, this is being used on a bare piece of wood, so equally well. Dries super quick and can be easily touched up as needed. Okay, so we have our shaper trace frame ready to go. We have our part that we're gonna digitize ready to go. And remember, this has to fit inside of this frame. Uh, otherwise, it's just not gonna work. So what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna, on the back of the shape or trace frame, there is a QR code. So we're just gonna scan that with the phone that's on your camera, just like that. That's gonna open up the built-in app that will take you right to the shape or trace um, or shaper or tools website. Now you may have to, to sign in at this point, uh, but you can just follow the, um, the prompts to do that. And you do not have to own a shaper origin to use the shaper trace. That's the cool thing about it. <clears throat> but you do need to set up a shaper trace account or a shaper origin account. So here's, we've got the part completely in the frame. These little dots do make it, they map it out nicely. Now notice at this point uh, that it still says it's yellow and it tells me that frame is not visible. The minute I manipulate that where the entire frame becomes visible, then that's where it's work, gonna work well. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna make sure that we're right. We're gonna get a good angle so there's no glare um, that we're seeing from the part that we're scanning. We're gonna digitize it and click the button and boom. So now what we're left with is a completely digitized version of that handwritten recipe, which is exactly what we wanted. And it looks like it did a pretty good job of digitizing everything, all right? So now what we're gonna do, we have two options. We can change that if we don't like the double outline. If we wanted just a center line, we can change that to a center line just right here on the fly. Now for our case, we're gonna need the double outline. When we're done, we're, where everything's good to go the way we want it, we're gonna click this blue check. Now this gives us options. We can save that as an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic. Uh, we can also save it to your Shaper files for use later, uh, or you can open it with the Shaper Studio and manipulate it a little bit should you want. For most applications, if you're not gonna be using this with a Shaper Origin uh, machine, then you're likely just gonna save the SVG or save your files to your account. Either way, once you're saved, then you're able to, to import that into just about any graphics program and do your design. In this case, we're gonna import this into Vectric and we're gonna manipulate it so that we can make this uh, look the way we want it uh, onto our cutting board. So let's get over into Vectric and let's check it out. Okay, so what we've done here is I've imported in an actual photograph of the little cutting board that we're going to use. The boss picked this up and so I've measured it's got five and a half so I know this dimension. I also measured from here 
to about right there and know that that's going to be nine. So that is actually the job size that I've created is nine by five and a half. What I did was I came in and made a rectangle basically right along the perimeter of this part. Then simply came over here and cropped that bitmap. And now that is what we're left with. We, you can see how easily that cropped away all the rest of the handle. And this is basically then scaled this up to the size of my job. So now we know what we're working with there. And so we've got the job ready to go. So I can go ahead and hide these bitmaps for now. What I've also done is I've brought in all three versions of this. This is the original. And the original is the uh, one that was just scanned in using the shape or trace. And you can see that it picked up lines that really are undesirable. And some of the letters are really unrecognizable. Uh, not really the best option for that. So what I decided to do then, if you remember, I went to the carbon paper. Just simply carbon copied it directly using that. And you can see it's a lot cleaner, but still uh, quite a few areas that are kind of lacking. Not really conducive for making a good v-carve and there would be a lot of time there to clean that up so what i did was i took that original uh to the photo to the, uh, took this one to the photocopier and enlarged it and then uh, re-scanned it on the um shape or trace i enlarged it about 150 percent and you can see this is the result much cleaner uh, all of the letters uh you can actually read you can you can see them uh, i did notice one letter down here that needed to be squared away let's see i think it was an a yep right there it was so it was an a right there that didn't show up and how i fixed that and i'm going to go ahead and delete that and i'll show you so you can see uh to make that work i went ahead and selected it and then came in and did an offset inward and i did a 0 0.03 just as a test and that seemed to work pretty good. It's not perfect, but for what we're doing, that certainly will give it at least uh, something that will mimic the rest of that. So the rest of this looks good. So now what we've got to do is we've got to take all of this and we've got to scale it down and get it centered here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to come over here and click. I would click F9, but that'll stop my screen recording. So in case I'm going to click the center there. And if I were to bring back up the bitmap layer um, so we can see that image, you can see that's pretty big. So let's do this. While we've got this selected, let's go ahead and highlight this again. We're going to scale it down just a little bit. So I'm going to drag on a corner, and I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I'm just going to drag that in until uh, I sort of get the way I think it looks pretty good. And I like that. That's pre pretty good. Um, we could have come over here and just manually chosen a size, but sometimes dragging this uh, gives you a better viewpoint of what this is. So I like what I'm going to do is I'm going to change um, this to red to make life easier. Actually, wrong one. Enlarged one is the one I'm after. Sorry about that. All right, so now I'm going to change this back to black. All right, so now this is what we've done. Now, if we were going to do other things, I did go ahead and make carbon, co I'd make co made copies of all of those, uh, so that if in case something happens, I've got a copy to work with, um, and I like doing that just to make sure in, in case of a boo boo or mess up. But this is what we're looking at. So I think this should V carve nicely. Let's just um, see what that looks like. We'll go ahead and come over here. I've got this open. We'll click on V carve. And I'm going to select a 60 degree V bit. Uh, 45 might actually be better, but we're going to see here what 60 looks like for that. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. This is a new file. And just for the sake, I'm not going to mess with the feeds and speeds just yet. I want to see what we're looking at. All right, let's select all of these. I'm going to go ahead and group them together so that's done. And now let's calculate. And I'm going to call this 60 degree. Let's just say that 60 so I can kind of keep these together. Now let's see what that looks like. Preview the visible toolpath. And that looks pretty clean, don't you think? That would look out pretty good. 
Uh, let's go ahead and make that toolpath black just so it stands out a little more. Not bad at all. All right, so while we're here, let's go back in and we will create another V carve toolpath. And I'm going to come up and select that 45 degree V bit, which is it's hiding in there somewhere. There we go. And then I'm going to call this one 45 because I'd like to be able to do a comparison on how deep that's going to look with a letter. So let's just pick a letter here. We'll choose this A. And if you look right down here, and it's kind of off screen, uh, it'll tell you that there's a Z height. And I'm going to hold my cursor right there, and that tells me that that is point. 0298. So let's just go ahead and click Preview Visible Toolpath. And I'd like to be able to put it right back into that same area. So now that is 0 .033. 0 .034. So we know that we're a little deeper uh, with that 45, which would be what I would expect. Uh, but that looks pretty clean. Uh, let me send this off to the boss and let him decide if he likes it. And uh, either way, we'll go with that and we'll be ready to give her a cut. So we'll come back then and uh, next time you see me, we'll be at the machine ready to cut this out. Okay, so we've got the all we have the stain all on the cutting board, so that's ready to go. We're going to slap some ore mask on here, so this kind of seals the surface off, and then that way when we carve away the letters, we'll be able to paint the lettering black, peel away a ore mask, and we're going to be left with a really cool crisp black edge. So let's get this installed on the machine, get the ore mask put on there, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, and as you can see, the ore mask it's real simple to use. Uh, with this particular situation, I'm just trimming off a small sheet of that uh, to fit our part and once you get it to cut to size you can lay that on there and we're going to use a spreader or a credit card or some type of squeegee type setup that's going to be flexible but also f kind of rigid and so in this case those spreaders work really well and we offer those in a variety of sizes so jumped on that with the little four inch and does a great job of getting out all those little air pockets so once the ore mask is applied it's time to install it on the machine and get it exactly where it needs to go and start to carve. I do have a little fence lined up on the left so it does give me some orientation. i uh, using the machine to jog that exactly where it needs to go to find my X and my Y. And since that has curved edges, that's a little tricky. So I found the X and then rolled it over and found the Y and then uh, was able to get that measurement locked in. Now this is a old school way of setting Z. I wanted to be kind of precise, slowly lowering that down until the paper stops. Once it stops, set your Z at zero and go about your business. I wanted to take a quick moment to show here just how easy it is to reset Z by itself on the shark. And there it is. And to run a file, it's very simple on the shark. We've showed this before. Simply access the USB, select the file that you want to run. Kind of gives you some preliminary information there. And when you're ready, and you've confirmed everything, press next. And at that point, you can start running the file. And obviously by the little green scroll there, you can see I did speed this up considerably, uh, but I did want to leave that in there so you could see that it was all carved out on the machine and turns out really well. This machine, this, this is pretty detailed font and so uh, and small, so this machine took a little time getting all of that data in there, but it certainly did a good job.
And I'm not sure why the software chose to go all the way up and then come all the way back down, but there it is. So we're going to finish that last line with a close-up so you can get a good glimpse at what that looks like. Okay, so after all of this, if we were going to paint this, this would be when you would do it, and it would leave a really crisp line due to the ore mask. But after it was carved, they liked the idea of the white with the brown background, so now we are not going to paint, so the ore mask won't be used for its intended purpose. So for now, we will just simply peel it away and reveal the final part so sometimes you got to do a little work to get this ore mask off so let me do a little digging but you can see looks good so far okay so there you go that is the rundown of the butcher block slash recipe card so if you got something old that's handwritten that you'd like to apply to something like this it's a great little gift idea as you can see, just a few different tools were used to get there, uh, but ultimately it turned out pretty well. Um, the Shaper Trace was instrumental in getting that digitized. If you just needed to do it by hand, then the carbon paper would have really been all you needed. You could take that carbon paper, apply it right to the surface, and you could carve that out by hand or with a hand router, something like that. But nonetheless, this is what we've got. Turned out great. We used a few different tools, different techniques. Hopefully it inspired you to get out in your shop and maybe do something similar. Well, this is Chris with Clean Spores Woodworking Shop, and well, We'll see you, see you next time. gonna be good i don't even know what i'm thinking so not ready for this get this installed onto the uh, machine i'm gonna put some or mask on the face of this and that way when i carve this away i can then do the lettering and uh you can see here this was my test piece everything turned out pretty good the, the we're gonna go ahead and put these with a black lettering so that really kind of pops onto this brown background that was stupid What did I do with the aura mask? Okay, so there we go. That is a quick rundown of the recipe butcher block setup, uh, some of the tools that we used, and uh, how we got to the end. Well, it was a fun little project, and uh, something simple and easy that you can do too. As you can see, a lot of different. Oh, that sucks. Being the clear, uh, the white wood underneath the brown. So that's what we got. But you see, we used a lot of different products to get to this point, but still a cool result. You can probably do a lot of different ways, and that sucked too.